Hey everybody, we've been uh, looking at some of the smoke that's been overhead. It's certainly a time lapse yesterday with thunderstorms, but today it's just fire. Out near Pagosa Springs in southern Colorado, you can see this plume. And I'll take the cursor and show you just about where I am. I'm up against these mountains right here. So I'm under the plume. What concerns me is that we've got a secondary fire that's begun right here. Farther to the northwest, we've got another fire going on here. But in the mountains down here in the San Juans, there are so many dead trees. We have, our winters have been so warm for so many years that the pine beetle has devastated these forests. I'll include some pictures and we'll see between 60 and in some locations, 80% of the trees are, are dead. It is standing tinder, ready to fire, ready to explode. And that may be what's happening with this particular fire that we're seeing overhead. Outside, the skies have gone orange. See pictures of the sun, but it is, yeah, just like last year with the, the fire in the springs. Colorado is on fire. Here we go. We can see the southern edge of the smoke plume from this particular fire. A few cumulus now beginning to show up. They hadn't been around most of the day. So we look out across the San Luis Valley, the dense smoke is not quite here, thank God, because I don't want to be breathing this crap. We've got beautiful blue skies with better than 100 miles visibility around this. The plume comes up and over the mountains and then continues on to the front range and eventually will continue off into the Great Plains. As we saw on satellite imagery, this is a very, very sharp defined edge. And then as we look at, uh, at the sun, she is orange. So this weather modification has, what we're not getting are cold winters. This pine beetle needs five consecutive days with nighttime temperatures at 20 below or colder to kill them. Otherwise they can overwinter in these trees, hatch another litter of bugs, another nest of eggs, and they continue to chew on the trees. And so the forests of Colorado, of Utah, of Idaho, of Montana, of Wyoming, South Dakota, are devastated by this damn beetle. And if we could get our winters back, if we could get our cold weather back in place, then we could begin to restore the forests. But as long as this weather modification continues, then the ecosystem will continue to degrade. And what the powers that be, these effing reptilians want, is this planet. And it is a scorched earth policy that it appears they are pursuing. And as long as they pursue that policy, then we, as individuals, need to do everything we can do, can to share this information, this knowledge with our elected officials so we can push back against the power structure at the top of this, this pyramid. Because if we don't, we're dead. Dead or alive, this is what we're breathing. As the forest burn as a result of global warming, engineered by these uh by this power elite all the smoke coming off the fires to the west and with such texture in the smoke there is simply just so much of it we've got to affect change folks something's got to change because this is not going to work for another generation or we will not have access to this planet as human beings keep looking up so as we get close to sunset i'm actually able to see some sunspots like right there on the sun as it is obscured by this incredible uh, canopy of smoke and then the texture in the clouds overhead. Clouds, ha ha ha. Well, I guess we've had a lot of pseudo clouds over the last couple of years. There's our sun and then the smoke. And this plume is not terribly wide, maybe 40 miles. And so we're kind of underneath the heart of it. <clears throat> I can see chemtrails off to the south, off this way, but there's the edge of it. There's the edge of the plume, and that's not that great of a distance to the south, under 20 miles. It doesn't smell too bad, but the smoke will lift off the valley floor, and we'll get a down breeze off the mountain tonight, and that'll help clear things out. Anyway, the west is on fire. Well, we've got another day on the calendar, 20th of June, and we still have this uh, West Fork fire in the San Juans. We had the time lapse from that yesterday, got it running again today. A lot more chemtrails today than we have seen in quite some time. This one uh, I painted up to look like a Southwest 737. And uh, it just kind of did 
a large arc, but it, more than anything, it looks like it's just kind of rounding this plume of smoke as it heads that way, and we're seeing a few segments light up. Those always tend to be of interest to other flights down the road. Just had another plane go through this little faint cloud here with just barely a trail, and it was that plane was the reason why I turned on the camera. Now I'm trying to find it again because uh, the trail was a little orangey, and then it would pop in and out. Now I've just completely lost the plane. But nevertheless, up here, a nice brightening, brightening on that part of the trail. As you can see, it gets pinched in. There's something in here is pushing this way. That way, you can see by the way the powders are floating and then how these ends curl in. All right, here's that other plane that was leaving a bit of a trail. Now we've had some lenticulars going on over the mountains. Kind of spectacular. This is a United airplane. Well, that's the impression that they're leaving with us. So I wanted to see if we got to this lenticular, if it was going to start leaving trails like every other plane today. And I don't see that that's happening. So these trails, these hundreds of trails, that have been left along these mountains, didn't have to be there. Because the atmosphere simply wasn't conducive to automatically generate a trail. Now, he's under the cloud deck, and there it goes. It's not in the clouds, it's below the clouds. And so this will end up being one of these bright, persistent, uh, trails that, uh, what was curious is how they deform, how they look squished or torn or pulled apart. And my feet are being chewed up by mosquitoes right now. So we'll watch that. So we still have that smoke, as I said earlier, but uh, what we've got are winds at Denver at 11 miles an hour at 610 millibars, which puts us at mountaintop level. Um, just because uh, these mountains are 50 or 14,000 foot, and so that 600 millibar level is above them, and yet we still have these lenticulars. We have to get above to nearly 30,000 feet before we get to wind speeds that would even begin to warrant the thought of lenticulars. There's all the smoke and fire to the west. It's thick, it's deep, and the chemtrails have been circling this plume for, for uh, hours. Well, we're off the next day, still on 20th of June, and here's the timestamp for the local satellite uh, imagery. Again, I'm in Colorado, southern Colorado at that. And as we've seen for the last day or so, we've got this West Fork complex fire uh, just kind of exploding here. It is expanding. I am underneath the smoke plume, and it is fanning out. And these are the lenticulars along the Colorado Rockies. Here's another fire sitting right here. But as you get farther north, there's no other lenticulars, and the winds are way, way too slow to even support any kind of lenticular situation. So we're going to look at the upper air chart for Denver. 12Z, the morning of the 20th, we'll come back down to about this this uh, this height. So we're in the 500 millibar range, and this is the height in meters. And here are wind speeds, 13, 18, 20, 21, 24, 26, 25. You know, we've got to get way up here till we cross the 225 millibar level. We're up, up you know, mid 30,000 foot before we see winds that could even begin to hint at lenticular development. Yet there they are, outside, and what we have is a deep low pressure moving through wet northwestern Montana, northern Idaho, kind of large, deep, strong southwesterly flow. These lenticulars are coming at 90 degrees across the jet stream flow. And here's about where I am, so this is the little kink that's kicking off a few clouds today, but this is the broad southwesterly flow we're in. And it is historically way um, insufficient to support the kind of lenticulars that are across the mountains today. It's just not right. All right, I want to go to the animated part because there was some other waves up here in Montana, or in uh, Nebraska, excuse me, and you can see them coursing northward, just rolling north and triggering the clouds as they do move on north. But uh, that's the kind of waves that are moving through this atmosphere that these uh, chemtrails really assist the powers that be in, in keeping track of. And here's another fire right here. So we're more and more fires. The San Juans have just been burned, burned, and they're dry and crispy. And I'll show you some pictures of what the forest looks like there now.
the shot was this picture was taken August 15th of 2012 and we're out in the San Juans and you can see the trees just how many of them have sustained beetle damage you know there's there's probably half the trees here aren't healthy or simply are standing and dead and when you ignite a fire in this kind of crispy forest there these little pockets of green here just can't stand up to the inferno that would develop and it is it is hillside after hillside after hillside that is just dead I mean dead these trees are standing, the pine beetles have chewed them up, and they, they cannot stay alive in this, uh, in this kind of environment. And there are hundreds of thousands of acres where the forests are dead. Occasionally there's a green tree in there, but it is, it is not common. You can see a few in here, but by far and away the forest is dead. And this happens when you don't get your winters cold enough. If it doesn't get below 20 below for five consecutive days, then this pine beetle just flourishes. And we end up with a forest that is, um, you know, greatly impacted by this. And the health of it, because it has gone on for years and years and years, just continues in decline. So that's our forest of Southern Colorado. And Northern Colorado. So here's our smoke. Getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And we can almost see it. I'm going to zoom in on the valley floor here. That uh, the stinky part of it is not far away. And like yesterday, it just keeps edging closer and closer. We have these incredible, incredible orange and blue contrast with the sun. This is, you know, beautiful in its own freaky sort of way. So people keep asking, you know, what are the chemtrails there for? I see them, I just don't understand. And here we go. Cloud, chemtrail. Look how the trail jumps there. So this trail was flown specifically through this cloud. They knew this cloud was there. Whatever triggered the formation of this cloud, because it isn't atmospheric humidity. There's not enough of it. And so the cloud comes through and a little jump. So it's this little anomaly. Whatever's happening here was the reason for it. Number one, the presence of this cloud. And number two, the need or the, the need they felt to um, essentially explore it and to see how this, uh, this trail would deform running through this cloud. We haven't even had an, another trail. It came right along right through there and as you can see hit the end of this cloud and probably either here or here. It's kind of hard for me to tell in this light but it looks like it went right into there. About right here is where it crossed. So, cloud shows up. What triggered it? So, if they're, they're just monitoring. That's all it is. It's this constant monitoring. Here's another cloud. Had a trail run right through it. Precisely so. The cloud wasn't much bigger than the width of the trail. Nevertheless, it's through it. Another one here. It's all about how the trails deform, separate, um, or just fade into disappearance. So this is what they're doing. There's something happening here, something, and I'm really becoming more and more convinced that it's dimensional and it has nothing to do with thermodynamics. So that's our sky here. The massive west, massive west, for, for west fork complex fire, you know, growing today. It's something else that I kind of find interesting that without clouds, without clouds without moisture we've got the smoke in the air and we can still see these pulses we can still see these waves we can still see this technology at work on the particulates that are just you know in the air you can see that pulsing action this continues to grow brighten and deform and then this trail is definitely a marking one right on the outside and you can see in the smoke that there is this little appendage coming out and whatever it was it was the chemtrail here has reacted to it right through this wedge, this little darkening wedge. The trail went perfectly through and what is fascinating is that the trail disappears from our visibility until it gets to the other side of that opening. I find that just a little bit on the curious side as to why the trail here has faded away. At the southern end of the uh, community I'm in and uh, we still have this crazy fire, sunset action going on, but on the edge of the smoke plume, 
We have been chemtrailed to death. Just chemtrail after chemtrail after chemtrail. And so they just keep threading out these shallow wave clouds. You can see one right here running this way. And at the peaks of the waves, the chemtrails are crossing. Another one here. Another one up here. So there's something at the edge of this smoke cloud that they're very interested in. This chemtrail weaving through three other boundaries. It's crazy. Okay, I'm getting beat by my mosquitoes. I gotta close this up. All right, anyway, um, I might be back. We'll see. You can hear the jet. Continue to lace out these trails just on the other side of this plume of smoke. Oh, the powers that be are aware of it, and if they really wanted to do something about these fires, they could. They could generate the rain, just as the lightning was generated to start them. They could do this. They could end these fires. So this is the West's Sandy event, and it's just the summer solstice. It's going to be a long, long summer in the droughted West.